Hi everyone. Uh, today I will uh, present the talk at Xilin, an efficient open source framework for large scale I'm serving. And I'm Liang Xiongming. I come from Shanghai Jiangdong University as a graduate student, and I'm also a member of the uh, organization LMCs. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, let's introduce what is SGLAM. I believe that most of you uh, today may heard may hear uh, heard of that our open source project. Yeah. Uh, we are a fastest serving engine for RM and VMs, and uh, uh, we are. Uh, we are currently uh, one of the state-of-the-art uh, performance uh, open source engine, and uh, we are the first uh, open source implementation to nearly match the throughput reported in the official DeepSeek blog at a large scale. And uh, meanwhile, I want to stress that uh, our elegant, lightweight, and customizable design has attracted uh, a wide adoption uh, from academics and big tech, tech uh, companies, uh, such as XAI, NVIDIA, AMD, based on Microsoft, and LinkedIn. And we also uh, scale as a high-performance solution uh, in the RL side. Yeah. So today's talk, I will uh, today's talk, I will portion uh, the outlines into four parts. The first part is uh, uh, milestones and uh, overall features overview. And uh, the second part is our efficient design of implementation of PDD segregation. Uh, the third part is large-scale EP support and the DeepSeek blog reproduction. And the last part is our ecosystem of the strong community and the future development. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's take in the first part. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is our milestones and overall uh, key features. Uh, uh, on 2023, uh, we released our uh, initial release uh, with the structure LM programming and the previous caching, uh, and also as well as a constraint decoding. In this version, we introduce uh, the first open source and uh, efficient prefix caching to reuse the uh, KV cache and uh, uh, to reduce the uh, redundant computation. And uh, 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 last year, uh, summer, we uh, introduced our 0.2 version. Uh, we uh, we achieved the leading performance in among uh, all the uh, open source informants with the uh, uh, deploy of the Llama 3. And, and uh, with the 0.3 release, we uh, we release our seven times faster DeepSeq MLA and uh, uh, faster with Torch compile, and uh, uh, we also support multi-image and and the video uh, uh, video models. And uh, the the last year we uh, released our 0.4 release. This is a, uh, this release contains zero overhead batch scheduler. Uh, cache aware DP rotor and Xgrama integration, and uh, we are um, uh, meanwhile we are the first to serve DeepSeq V3, and uh, just the uh, oh uh, just the uh, last month uh, we first open sourced the implementation of a uh, uh, large scale expert parism with preview and decode desegregation. Uh, we achieved like five times faster than vanilla DP, and uh, we matched the performance. Uh, uh, mentioned in DeepSeek blog, and uh, we matched the API cost uh, like a uh, zero point two uh, dollars, uh, one million token. Yeah. So uh, the second part is uh, uh, is uh, efficient design and implementation of PD disaggregation. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the issue with non PD disaggregation, non disaggregation scattering mode. As 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 we all know that uh, uh, without the Disaggregation scheduling, uh, the decoding batches will always be preempted by uh, prefilling. Uh, this will introduce uh, extra uh, latency to the token generation. And uh, the second problem is uh, uh, DP attention with non disaggregation mode. Uh, it brings uh, uh, the computation and the communication imbalance uh, uh, within the same DP, DP attention group. Uh, uh, decoding and prefilling batches, they may mix uh, with each other and uh, uh, being executed simultaneously. This uh, will increase the latency for decoded tokens and cause uh, the load imbalance. Uh, the third one is in counter with DPEP, and this part I will also introduce later. Uh, prefill and decode, uh, they, they, they usually use a different dispatch mode. Uh, without disaggregation, DPEP cannot support both in a same communication group. Uh, so. Uh, and we uh, and we implement the PD disaggregation, and uh, this is an overview of our, our architecture. Uh, uh, for example, the 
uh, the purple uh, ones is the preview instances or clusters, and the orange ones is decoder instances. Uh, we use the load balancer as a request entry point, and uh, uh, this this load balancer is uh, for both preview and the decode paths. So. Uh, in, in our design, LB is decoupled from computational logic and only uh, responsible for select a PD pair and uh, route to the uh, and uh, a return request is is is, is decoupled. And uh, we also support uh, non-blocking and RDMA based KV transfer. And uh, uh, also we we are we offer flexible API integration of the transfer engine. Uh, for example, like Nixo and Mooncake, uh, just as a, a uh, Dr. Zhang just uh, uh, mentioned in last talk. Yeah. Uh, here is a demonstration of uh, uh, the PD desegregation timeline. Uh, time, time, time step. Yeah. Uh, first, we uh, suppose that we have a preview instance and uh, we have a decoder instance. Uh, the first thing is the load balancer. They should to send a request. Uh, they, they, they should choose a PD pair and send the request uh, to both preview instance and decoder instance. And uh, there, the first there is a handshake, hand, handshake process. The handshake uh, exchange the metadata uh, of like a KV, uh, KV in index and the addresses. And uh, uh, the sender, the KV cache sender and the KV cache receiver, they, they are initialized during this phase. And the second thing is, uh, uh, when you want to transfer the KV cache to the decoder engine, the decoder engine they must have enough memory to, 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 to put this KV cache. So the second, uh, the second event is the pre-allocation. Uh, uh, after the decoder instance, they have enough uh, uh, memory for uh, the KV cache. They, they, they pre-allocate the KV cache in the memory pool and then notify the preview instance that yes, uh, we have enough memory so you can start the prefilling, you, you can start the prefilling phase and, and send KV cache to us. And uh, then the preview, they begin the preview forwards and uh, after the prefilling, uh, they send the KV cache to the decoder instance. Uh, the last part is the decoder instance to, 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 to do the decode. After the decode, uh, the result is uh, returned to the load balancer and the load balancer returns the result to, to the user side. And this is a PD desegregation timestamp. It's also a demonstration. Yeah. So uh, the next part is uh, the large scale expert parties and support and deep seek block reproduction. Yeah. Uh, uh, there. Even there is only like three layers of uh, uh, dense layers in deep sleep models. Uh, uh, we still need to figure out how to efficiently serve these layers with dense FFM. Uh, we choose to use pure pure data parallel instead of uh, uh, tensor parallel or mix uh, of them. Uh, this is for we we can avoid the TP fragmentation uh, on large hidden sites. Uh, we uh, we uh, we don't need to cut the tensor uh, into uh, into different TP ranks, and the and, and uh, the, uh, the the uh, the second advantage is uh, we can uh, optimize the memory efficiency uh, for both preview and decode. Uh, low TP degrees they can benefit from uh, only DP uh, equals one. Uh, this can reduce per device memory, and uh, uh, the biggest and the third uh, 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 optimization is. Uh, uh, they can bring is to minimize the communication overhead uh, by using purely uh, uh, purely data parallel. We can avoid all the communication within the tensor parallelism group. Uh, then for all layer for every layer is only uh, one scatter and one all gather. Uh, the scatter is before the attention part, and the all gather is uh, after the the, uh, the the attention part. Uh, only only twice communication. Uh, and also for the MOE layers, as far as FFN, uh, we use uh, 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 pattern strategy in DeepSeq block. Uh, it's it's uh, DP attention with uh, sparse FFN with expert parallelism. Uh, the reason is we can scale the model capacity. Different experts can be partitioned in different uh, devices. So uh, this can uh, this can support more experts numbers and uh, removing the memory bottleneck. And the 
the set uh, the second uh, uh, advantage is uh, we can uh, uh, no uh, this is not relevant this is the challenges uh, brought by uh, the MOE uh, strategy uh, by the expert partner strategy uh, uh, when you deploy the uh, MOE uh, layers with a uh, 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 one DPL attention uh, dispatch uh, EP sparse FFN and then combine they face the pattern of uh, dispatch expert combine, uh, combination uh, this brings some uh, communication overhead and under utilization of uh, GPU resources uh, luckily this can be optimized by DPP and the two batch overlap which I will also introduce later and also this uh, this also brings uh, the load imbalance problem and this can be uh, addressed by the EPLB yeah so uh, the first the, the first problem is to uh, solve the compat compatibility issue with DPP uh, DPP they hold two dispatch mode for uh, uh, for for normal mode and the low latency mode the normal mode uh, they are profile uh, they are profile friendly, but uh, they use uh, symbolic uh, tensor shape. Uh, this 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 doesn't support the CUDA graph. And the latency mode they use static data uh, tensor shape. It's decode friendly, uh, and uh, both of them they can support DP attention. And uh, there is a, a auto mode to to automatically handle uh, both input and output. But uh, as just just as I mentioned in uh, in. In, in several slides before, uh, when you use uh, preview and decode uh, within the same uh, communication group uh, in DPP, uh, they are incompatible uh, because they are, uh, you cannot put two dispatch mode in within the same communication group. So uh, this is the reason, uh, this is the solution how we solve the com compatibility issue with DPP and this is also uh, one of the reasons that we should use uh, PD desegregation instead of unified scheduling. Uh, uh, this part I will introduce the implementation details of uh, uh, two batch overlap uh, for short T T TBO. Uh, this is an example of uh, 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 improper launch order of TBO. Uh, you can notice that uh, we want to implement TBO with communication and uh, computation are executed uh, at the same time uh, simultaneously. And uh, if we dispatch the, uh, if we launch the dispatch kernel before the MLP kernel, uh, for example, the uh, the yellow ones uh, dispatch kernel is launched before the the green batch uh, MLP kernel. So uh, the dispatch, they will bring synchronization, which means uh, the CPU will be blocked until the GPU receive all the metadata from all other EP ranks. Then they can allocate the uh, right shape tensor, uh, the, the correctly sized tensors. So uh, you cannot uh, launch uh, two kernel uh, yeah, so the dispatch kernel launch will block the MLP kernel launch, which brings uh, the waste of uh, 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 computation resources. And uh, so we need to solve this uh, by, by placing the computation kernel always before the communication kernel. So uh, there is a slight difference is we put the green MLP before the yellow dispatch kernel. This is a launch order and for the execution side, they are executed simultaneously. Yeah. So, uh, so in each round, uh, uh, follow the pattern of uh, computation and the communication. Yeah, this is a launch uh, order. Then a uh, GPU can uh, remain active uh, during the communication. Uh, so, how to implement this uh, in a clean manner? So uh, we use the abstraction uh, operation list and the yield points. This uh, enable cooperative scheduling, and uh, this uh, eliminates code duplication and avoids um, some possibly uh, uh, variable post fixes. And this can uh, this can also manage the partial completion of between different uh, attention layers, uh, decoder layers. Yeah. So. Uh, this is our throughput performance, and uh, this 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 benchmark uh, result is also posted in our 
uh, LMC's blog. Uh, you can just uh, search at Google LMC's.org and you can find the blog. Yeah. Uh, this benchmark is uh, uh, evaluate on preview and decode uh, uh, independently, assuming that unlimited resources for the other side. So, uh, and we can notice that uh, for the preview mode, we achieve uh, three times uh, faster throughput uh, than vanilla tensor parism uh, of 16 uh, TP uh, ranks. And we, for the decode part, we uh, successfully enlarge the batch size uh, from around uh, maybe uh, 15 to more than more than 200. Uh, 200, yeah, and we also improve the throughput of decoder uh, by 5.1 times, and this can uh, roughly match the uh, blog uh, posted by DeepSeek uh, in this February. Uh, also, we sh we also implement uh, expert parallelism uh, load balancer uh, in real world serving challenges. Uh, uh, the imbalance worsen at scale with uh, some some node they will uh, accept so many uh, rotated experts and uh, some node they are they are, they are staying idle uh, without uh, routing expert to them. So uh, two strategy to improve balance is uh, we can improve the batch size uh, and uh, imp uh, improve the uh, clusters. Uh, we can improve this while cluster scaling and uh, uh, speculative decoding like uh, MTP. Uh, with MTP, we can forward like one or, or two, three, four tokens at the same decode time. And then the batch size, they can be multiplied like three or four times. Uh, uh, also, s implementation uh, implementation uh, implement a, a, a re rebalance uh, uh, for for just the exchange expert ways with torch P2P uh, operations. And this is ablation study of uh, effects of uh, scale and EPLB uh, uh, to balancedness. The balancedness is defined as the ratio between mean computation time as a maximum computation time for MOE layer among GPUs. Uh, the balancedness uh, decreases when the system scales uh, with a number of nodes. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, we can find that uh, enabling EPLB significantly uh, improves the uh, balancedness. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, all part of uh, our uh, reproduction of DeepSeq block. Yeah, so the last part is our ecosystem and a strong community and a future development. Uh, also, we we are the first uh, we are the first one to open source uh, the DeepSeq. Uh, large-scale EPU deploy, and there are some future work we need to solve. Uh, is the first one is the, the latency optimization. Uh, uh, we, the, the, the first token latency and uh, inter-token latency is, is still too large, and we need uh, tuning for real-time use cases. And the second length is uh, constrained by, uh, uh, by limited uh, uh, 96 GPU setup. And uh, MTP and the data parallel attention is not fully integrated uh, together, and the EPLB is only uh, evaluated in, uh, in simulated workload. And, uh, and uh, the dense layers of FFN, they can be benefit from small uh, TP sizes, and we only support tensor parallelism, full tensor parallelism, and uh, or full data parallel. And uh, we also plan to uh, support Blackwell uh, architecture, and uh, uh, if anyone here want to join the community to uh, contribute to the Blackwell support, you can just uh, join our Slack. Uh, yeah, so this is our team. Yeah, we our team is incubated by LMCs. is a is a corporation and non benefit. Uh, and the uh, the, there is a list of the uh, major maintainers, and we have uh, uh, contributors over 400. Yeah. Uh, the last stage is our community adoption. So we have, uh, yeah, the, our biggest uh, uh, client is XAI and NVIDIA and AMD. And uh, also thanks to PyTorch to give me this chance to give this talk. Yeah, thank you.